10 human beings will be in one chain. Imagine how hard this one will be. After walking 50 miles, being on board boats, without food for several hours, you arrive here. Chain 10 human beings, working for you to be sold. On Ceylon, with all the trees you are seeing today, there were no tree here. It was an open field. On arrival here, this will be the first point of contact with those slaves who will be being sold into this castle slave trade. While they are here, the chain, they will lose those chains. Men will be in one line. Women will be in one line. And kids age from 10, 12, and 13 will be in another line. The chief agent and the clerk will walk outside with other slave buyers. They have to do physical tests right here. They will ask each of them to open their mouth. Teeth experiment was the worst one they will do. Next, they will ask them to do some physical exercise. Many are asked to go like this, these black slaves. They hit them on their chest. They use a piece of stick to hit on their feet for them to know how physical they are. And those who are not physical, the sea was their deathbed. They were chained and then being dumped into the sea. They will die there. So after here, after they have done all this physical exercise here, those who are physically fit, they employ shackles or they bring shackle here before walking into the castle. Whilst the Royal African Company, the Gambia Adventure were here, they were fetching water at Oku Town. And Oku Town is a tassel. At times, they are attacked by pirates. So that's when the two private companies took over here. Henry Lawrence and John Burns asked the slave to dog this well. Because the first time, the first two companies were giving them salt water to drink on arrival here. But Henry Lawrence, Alexander Anderson and Cole were the most successful people here. Dug this well over 10 feet. This was what they were preparing food with. But the slave masters were not drinking from this well. So then they were saying, this well was without salt. I just hope and pray this well will be restored one day and have the opportunity to bring the same water which my father, my forefathers, were drinking before they were sold into slavery. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This was the water they were drinking here, mm -hmm. but not the slave masters. Mm -hmm. It was dug by the slave themselves. This well has been here for over 200 years. The thing you are seeing was not here. So after that, let's make our way now into the castle where the slaves were held captive. No, Spider web. Huh? Spider web. Uh. <coughs> The gates of no return. The gates where thousands of Sierra Leone went through 
coming back is a two option. It's either you go on the slave trade or you go, this seed become your death bed. Why is the slave trade was going on here? After they have removed the chain, being shackled, you walk through these gates. And these gates will be only open when slaves are going in. It was a wooden door. And the chain at the back is the original chain that was here. And this fort was built with lime, lime and stone. On top of here, there was a watchtower. Two people here are here, watching west. For pirates and boats that were coming. But in here, as soon as you make your way in here, you are going either to a male or female enclosure. Coming back is for you to walk down here to the jetty for you to board your boat and then take it to your vessel. But right in front of here, that shackle will be moved. They will move that shackle and employ another shackle on you. But the one on board is different from the one you are taking out of here. Because human beings, we are packed like a tin of sardine or a packer like how we pack a book of shelf. That's how they were packed. So a lot of the Sierra Leoneans who walk through these gates as slaves walk, survive. Those who survive arrive in America. Those who never survive, they see become their death bed. So we are coming in for you to have a tour of the castle slave trade. Your movements, I can tell, because I'm doing the same thing. Ma, yeah, thank you. There was a period in Sierra Leone, this land was declared as the white man's grave. Wow. Among the Temne, the northern part of those some white people who are working here, slave masters, colonial masters, they were dying. For them, they think they are dying of black magic. They never knew they were dying of the bite of the mosquito which caused malaria. They were dying here. So, this was a two-story building. Down here was a point where they used to keep their precious goods, their gold, their ivory. And those junior workers, only are women, working for them. The white women, they were staying here. And bomb cellar was just like this, on paved. Not until a doctor was sent from Liverpool to do a post on one of the dead bodies and find out they are dying of malaria. That's why places like Hill Station, those wooden houses, if you are going towards Country Lodge, that's why they were built. Living within this area give them a free access to, to my malaria by them because there are lots of trees. And that's why when the Queen arrived in Sierra Leone, she also stays at Hill Station. So this was a two-story building. We are those junior workers here, we are staying, and here was where they used to keep their precious goods. And it was built by slaves. This place was built by the slaves themselves. A lime line, oyster shell, and stone was used to build Bones Island. This is the original ruined Fort Castle you can see. Senegal, Ghana, they built their own. This was built from the slavery era. It has been here for almost 500 years now. And at the back here, is the flag post. There was a British flag here, which was called the Union Jack. This flag was here flying to tell you the British were in control of this island. But if you are here buying slaves, if you want to come to buy slaves to Bounce Island, underneath that flag, if you see a red flag underneath that flag, it means Business is not going on. The island is under attack. But if you see white flag, underneath that flag, it means business is going on. So, if you are coming from Aberdeen, where Cook Lighthouse is, the first thing you should look at is was this flag here. Right here. If you saw red underneath the flag, it means you need to stay around Tasso. The island is under attack. We continue here. I 
as I said earlier, this place was attacked four times and twice by the French. To show you how influential the British were at Bon Island for 140 years, 16 cannons were sent by King George III. If you go close to all of these cannons, they have all of them have the Royal Crown. This is the Royal Crown, this is George, and this is three. You see how lovely the cutting tree is? You see how lovely the root is? You can only find this lovely root here in the whole of Freetown or the whole of Sierra Leone. This cutting tree was not here when the slavery was going on. But this is where those African American, it's because of the COVID, locals within this community, they do come here to poor libation. So there are four fathers who died in the slave trade. Those who survived and those who died. You need food here. They put all the food here. It's more common among the creators of Freetown. Taking food to the burial ground. They will sing song. They will dance. And then here, yeah, they will pray. Those African Americans who are coming back home. Who trace their roots. And then you want to can come here and have a group photo. This is the root of a cotton tree. It used to produce cotton. And this cotton was used to, pre to prepare the country clothes. Mm -hmm. What's this root? Cotton tree. It, it was not here. It only grew after the abolition of the slave trade. Mm. Never existed, you know, black and white, you know, now coming to listen to these horrible stories. Both black and white committed against you know, other people, it's something that no human being would, would want to hear. It's really, really something that we should repent as human beings. You know. Yeah, yeah, and I think we can't change the past, but we can change the future, you know, we can do better. Yeah, 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 yeah. This will be the first point they will open, give weapons to the slaves, and they will have a good hand for in here. If they are overpowered, this slave master would just grab the boat and then they ran away to other islands. So this was the power magazine. Let's just walk down here. <laughs> this we are buying from Sorry. locals as well. Colin Powell visits Sea alone as part of the peacekeeping. I have never met him, but people we are saying it's not that much humanly friendly because before having a tour of Bones Island. He's a Sierra Leonean. In his Alba is a Sierra Leonean. There's a Washington is a Sierra Leonean. And the Walking, the two former presidents of America, George Walking Bush. They are great great granddad. I have found something more. Today I have found my roots. Now I know where my roots start. My roots start where I am standing. We have a group of people currently here. They are the eighth generation of people who are taken from Bon Thailand. So they are here a couple of days ago. One is Tenme, one is Mende, and one is Mita. After going to Afghan Affairs. So this is where he stands and says his work. And at the back here there was a golf course, there was a cold room. Right in the evening, there will be children playing golf. And the old room was down here. And over here was where they used to hang for their boat. So there was a boat hang for in here. If this place is overpowered, those British people, whom are the slave masters walking here, like Oswald and Sergeant, Alex and their Anderson and Co. They will just take their boats here, run for their life to some of these islands. And then they will go, they will be there for days and return back after everything has been restored. So Bones <coughs> was built with oyster shells, 
Lime line and stone. So this is the oyster shell which Bon Salam was built with. The oven was down there. They can you can give fire to this one. It becomes something like more weak, and then you pound it, it becomes powder. That was a chemical they were taking from England. Like if they put it together, it gives you. So you see the stone? Stone was built, used to build bone salam. The slaves themselves built it here. It was not built by the white people, the slaves themselves, the black people built this place for themselves. Imagine somebody building his own prison. So there was a period of time, if you had Will Smart, the actual name of this boy was called Konko. Konko was a young boy who was captured, aged between 13 and 14, sold into slave trade. He was here when this place was attacked. Konko, living here, hide himself in some of the precious things which was not more materialized to those pirates who were coming. They are more interested in the slaves. So when they left, the British return and they find this young boy surviving after seeing a lot of dead bodies lying here and more slaves have been taken illegally according to them. They said, how did he survive this attack? And this boy name was changed from Kongpo to from Smart because of he was smart. So the name Smart hail from Bon Thailand. Bombu in Mende, it means fire. So the name Smart hail from here. Because he was so smart, they changed him from Kongpo to Bombu Smart. He built his own fort over there. So those who are taking slaves from the Potluck of Creek to sell here, they are paying homage to him before he takes slaves here. So that's how it was, he was operating him. If you come further here, 1807 was one seller was abandoned in 1835. I was saying about those different types of settlers, whom they call slaves. The British have a date here, which say this was a length of period they operate here. And if you check, it's close to 140 years. Slavery, when it was abolished, these people were returning back home. And then, there was still people doing some slavery which we call in captives. If you go to the cutting tree, you can see this plaque with some information, 1787 to 1807. If you go to the ghetto to the old king's yard, you can see a date, 1807 to 1860. That's what the asylum seeking place. These were period where slaves were coming back. So the British have a map for every area where slavery was going on, which they involved in and where they were working. That's why when you go to York, you can see where the royal family is residing. And then they can take you down to the cave which is called Minimo. For water. Which the royal family we are going to. So ladies and gentlemen. For 140 years of slavery activity in Sierra Leone. Sierra Leonean, we are sold into slavery. But let's walk to the grave site for you to see how many black people we are buried compared to how many white people we are buried here at this island. Let's make our way to the grave site. Lying here are only two black people. By farmer, whose name was later changed to Anderson and the clerk who has no name. Only two of them were buried here. The reason why these two black people are lying here, this man by farmer was given report directly to Anderson, to Henry Lawrence and John Ben in England. That's his clerk. So that's the day we are buried here. The African village was just down here, where the Brumetians were living. So, the only two black Sierlonians that we are buried for 140 years of existence here. These are the only two black people. Some died on arrival. Some women were weak pregnant. Probably the, everything they have been through, they have lost the pregnancy, but there is no medical support, so they become weak. Men too cannot stand. They died, so they were not counting the dead bodies. Because it's they a wicked just, history, they can't write that. They, they were just counting <laughs> those who were sold mm, into the slavery. Because they have to like give for every year a, a package or a percentage to the, to the British government saying 10,000 we are sheep, 5,000 we are sheep, this arrived in Charleston, this arrived in Georgia. That's why if you go to these places, you see black names of people whom arrive in different destinations from Sierra Leone.
So if you turn your back over there, you can see the grave site of the white people. Tasso to here. He is the first chief agent. If you go over there, you can see a whole family that died in the coast of Guinea. Catherine Hortin, Andrew Hortin, they died. Some died in 1776. All of them are buried here. Lying here, a whole family. These are all like this side. The father, the mother, their daughter, their son, they died on board vessels. They died in their place out of CIU. So they are returned and buried here. These are all great sites, and there are more great sites to go further. It's part of the American government, their restoration work they are doing. Okay. So the guy that was working here died of COVID on his way back going home. Whatever that job over there. That's all of great masters. So they have to have a comprehensive name of all of them here. So William Newton, who was the boy, <laughs> Working as a slave master at Banana Island, he does something. He was demoted, but he was not treated as a slave. Newton at Banana Island write the Amazing Grace. That hymn was written in Sierra Leone, but it was not tuned in Sierra Leone. It was tuned by the Americans. It says, Amazing Grace out here. The Savior is like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. This man working as a slave master in Sierra Leone wanted to become a local preacher. He was ordained as a local preacher in England in Whiskey. On the eve of New Year's Day, he wants to say a sermon. What sermon can this man say to black people who have sold into slavery, whom they have tortured, sharply arrived in different destinations? There he remembered the hymn. He used the Bible to talk to these people. But he never used the Bible while he was working as a slave master here. He said, sorry through the scene. If you listen to the words, he said, amazing grace out through the sound. Mm -hmm. What sound was he referring to? Sound of sharpness. Mm -hmm. The scene. Horrible. Women being raped. Men being raped and tortured. But what sound is he hearing today? Him. Carol. The same people sitting in one enclosure. He considered himself to be a wretch. He said, God saved him after he encountered God. He said he was blind. Whilst he was doing all these things to black people, he said he found God after everything. But people never say they forgive him. He wanted to make the voyage back to Sierra Leone and to Africa to say sorry. He died of cold and malaria. He never reached here. If you can remember, when president elect, the president, the current president of the United States of America, President Joe Biden, on his inauguration day ceremony, Somebody walked down the stairs to recite this in the amazing grace. If you can remember on that fateful day. He wants to remember the millions of American population out there who are trying to do racial discrimination among their own citizens. So remember them. The second and third standard was written in America. If you listen to the second standard, it's about how this slave went through ticks and turns, how they survived through different things. So Africans do love the amazing grace. To them, it's like a hymn that gives them hope. They never knew Newton was saying sorry with this hymn. So Newton does a lot of other hymns, but the amazing grace is the most... How are you? 
I'm fine. Um, it, I'm here at Bounty Island and I'm very impressed right now because we did a tour around the island here and we're listening to all of the flags singing. It was very impressive and it left me very emotional. Okay. So you are from which country? I'm from Germany. You're from Germany. Okay. So this is Bons Island and now we are heading out to Tasso Island. So what's your take so far about Bons Island? Yeah, um, so going around here and getting all that impression how the people were uh, traded and treated, um, it left me literally